How you doing? So, how can singing age-old working songs somehow influence mental health in the 21st century? 2021 was called by some the year of the sea shanty. So what is a sea shanty? Well, sea shanties were working songs. Sailors sung them on tall ships to assist working in time. They had simple rhythms and simple tunes that mirrored the exertion of the task they were used for. The chief quality of the shanty man was to be loud. So I'm going to sing you a, a brief excerpt of a shanty that was used by sailors as they pushed on the capstan to wind in the anchor. Okay, I want to turn down the microphone. Now we are ready to head for the horn. Hey, hey, roll and go. Our boots and our clothes, boys, are all in the pond. To me, rollicking, randy, dandy, oh. So heave a pole and heave away. Hey, hey, roll and go. The anchor's on board and the cable's all stored. To me, rollicking, randy, dandy, oh. So, um, who sings sea shanties now? Well, in 2021, <laughs> thank you, in 2021, Nathan Evans, who was a postman in Scotland at the time, had an international hit with the maritime song, The Wellerman. It went viral on the social media platform, TikTok. One video was streamed, was viewed, 73 million times. He was interviewed by TV, radio, newspapers all over the world. And it's undeniable that Nathan Evans brought shanty singing to the attention of a younger generation. However, there were already a huge number of people that loved singing shanties all around the world. Tall ships, as they sailed around the globe, would put into harbors everywhere. And they'd get new sailors wherever they needed them, which meant that sailing ships were floating multicultural communities. The effect of this was that sea shanties were influenced by every maritime nation on the planet. The modern legacy of that is that there are shanty singing groups and shanty festivals all around the world. And these festivals are attended by tens of thousands of people. There are superstars of the shanty singing world that fill stadiums. And there's even one group called the Fisherman's Friends who had a feature film made about them. Ugh. Just grab a drink. So what does all this have to do with mental health? Well, when I started singing shanties, I wasn't going so great. I'd been pursuing career goals that I thought would make me happy. In fact, the better my career was going, the unhappier I felt. I was working longer and longer hours, and I was getting more and more stressed and tired. And the effect was, I was grumpy a lot of the time, and I felt more distant from my friends and family. So around this time, my wife, who knows me better than I know myself, bought me the Fisherman's Friend CD. And I put it on in the car as I was driving to and from work, and I started singing along with it. And something about singing shanties made me feel better. I couldn't explain what it was, but it just helped. So I decided, I've never been in a choir, I decided I wanted to join a shanty crew. So I rocked up at the shanty crew in a place called Sheringham in the UK and asked if I could join. And the lads were great. They said, um, come in. They taught me loads of songs. And I'd go there every Thursday. And at the end of the rehearsal, I'd leave absolutely buzzing. Now, at this particular point in our lives, we'd made a decision to emigrate to Australia. So when I got to Australia, one of the first things I did when I got to Albany was look for the local shanty crew to join. Except there wasn't one. So a group of lads and I started the Albany Shantymen. The guys in Sheringham were really supportive. They sent loads of good advice about starting a shanty crew, and they gave us a copy of all of their lyrics. So a whole new group of guys started singing shanties. And they said the same thing as me. 
It made them feel good. But why? Well, older generations knew that group singing was good for us. I was going to say our grandparents, but looking at the age of some of the people in the room, our great-great-great-grandparents <laughs> used to meet and sing in pubs in the days before staring at your phone and looking at big screens. They'd meet, they'd sing, and they had songs that formed part of the bonds of, of, of society, songs that told the story, songs that, that, um, that became part of the, the, the place where you lived, songs that you would sing to express joy at weddings and grief at wakes. If you think about, those of you that know about the Blitz in London, if you think about the music of Dame Vera Lynn, it became anthemic for the people that went through that experience. And a lot of people of that generation would sing those songs together. But group singing for a while seemed to fade in popularity, but it some, had something of a resurgence recently. And part of that has been to do with social media platforms. So I wonder whether uh, shanty singing is just another form of people connecting through music, like TikTok, but better because we do it in person. Well, possibly, but I think there's more to it than that. We know that community activities are good for your mental health. Campaigns like Act, Belong, Commit are based on that knowledge. Mental health professionals call activities like this behavioral activation. And in order for it to work, it has three key components. And we use the name, the acronym ACE to help us remember those. So it's got to give us a sense of achievement. It's got to come with a sense of community. And it should give us a feeling of enjoyment. So what achievement do you get from singing? Well... As you get better at singing, and you sound better, you start to go through pleasure mastery cycles. And the more you improve at any activity, the more likely you start getting endorphin released as a result. For uh, community, shanties, because they're working songs that were designed to help people work together, are all about inclusivity. We know that loneliness and social isolation are risk factors for poor mental health. So having activities that bring people together that require no prior knowledge and are very inclusive uh, has a definite benefit for mental health. And the, the last of those, enjoyment. Shanties are packed with emotion. They're hugely enjoyable songs to sing. They're songs of love and sadness, loss, grief, unbridled joy and adventure. Admittedly, Sometimes the love refers to a financial transaction in an alleyway and the loss is talking about a leg. But they're packed with emotion and they're hugely cathartic. And because of that, um, you get these massive um, rushes of oxytocin and endorphins through the singing. And there's loads published about singing, group singing in particular, being good for your mental health. So why shanty singing? This could have been any kind of singing. Why, why shanty singing in particular, and why now? Well, uh, Amanda Petrosic, who was a, a journalist at the New Yorker magazine, she wrote a piece about Nathan Evans, and she linked the rise in popularity of shanty singing to the COVID experience. She said that uh, during a time of solitude and self-banishment, isolation, when people were having to cancel holidays and they weren't able to engage in their normal activities, that shanties gave us a glimpse into a possible future. Ocean scenes, tall ships, grog, pirates. And it was almost a fantasy of where life could go after COVID. And I think all of that's possibly true. Um, I don't doubt that a big part of why shanties became popular last year was because of COVID. But that doesn't take into account that there were thousands of people singing shanties before that happened. So there must be more to this. So here we are at the heart of the matter. Why is it that singing shanties has become popular 
with a certain demographic, a certain, a certain group. Um, men don't sing. On the whole, men just don't sing. And I don't want to terrify you by testing that now and seeing if any of you want to come up here and sing a song. Um, there's a little bit of nervous laughter, but mostly just nerves there, I think. Um, and just bear with me for a moment, because I know that shanties aren't just sung by men. There are loads of amazing female shanty singers. But we know that group singing is good for you. But we also know that the majority of men will happily sing in a stadium, but if they're asked to sing at almost any other public occasion, will not be heard to utter a sound. So here are my five reasons why I think shanty singing might be an acceptable way for men to sing in groups. Okay? So the first one, and we've already touched on this. Shanty singing very closely mirrors the kind of singing that you get at sports events, at stadiums. Um, if you've been to the footy, if you've been to a rugby match, and you think of that kind of shouty style of singing, it fits perfectly with shanties. You're stood in a crowd, you're surrounded by other men, you lose your sense of self-consciousness. The words are simple, the rhythms are simple, the lyrics are simple, men are suited to this kind of music. <laughs> Second, we mostly sing in the pub. Men are comfortable in the pub. They don't have to be persuaded to go to the pub. Well, um, we often get this experience as a group where some young fellows will walk into the pub and they'll see us singing and they'll think, oh God, what have I walked into? And they'll laugh at us. But then something happens. Something about this style of singing resonates with them. And before you know it, the same fellows that were laughing at us, I stood up singing along point in hand. If you hold the singing somewhere where men want to go, they're more likely to want to go again. Pub, beer, mates, singing, easy. Next, emotion. Now we know that men struggle to express emotion. The years of working in mental health, I've lost count of the number of times I've asked a man, how are you feeling? Only to be met with silence. In fact, when I was working in secure units with young friends, we'd often have to start them off by explaining to them the five emotions of man so that they'd have something to answer. Happy, sad, angry, hungry, and horny. <laughs> Keep it simple. Shanty songs enable people to express emotion. Men feel all the same emotions as women. But conditioning from early childhood is a barrier to expression that many never overcome. Shanty singing has a huge range of themes that we sing about. And yes, there are bawdy songs and fun songs and songs about lost legs, but there are also really poignant songs, songs that memorialize tragedy that have a, a, a sensitivity to them. And men are surprisingly comfortable singing about those themes. Fourth on this list is the link between shanty singing and collecting money for charity. So in the UK, another example because that's where I'm from, most shanty groups raise money for the Royal National Lifeboat Institute. So they'll support the running and the maintenance of their local lifeboat to save lives at sea. Here in Australia, shanty groups do the same thing. We have festivals and we have shanty groups that raise money for local charities. Men worry about being ridiculed by other men for singing, but by doing something good for their community, they become immune to this ridicule. And more than that, by, by doing something good for the community, they often get recognized by local newspapers and radios, and they end up with a collective and an individual sense of pride for what they're doing. Finally, shanty singing gives us a connection to history. History in the biggest sense of seafaring nations, but also 
local history and local stories. So by singing traditional shanty songs, we're maintaining a tradition and passing it on to the next generation. But a lot of shanty groups will take local folk history, incredible local stories, and they'll write those stories into new music and communicate that to the wider community, sharing that information. And that builds on that sense of community cohesiveness by sharing those stories and building a sense of shared identity. And it's never more powerful than when it happens talking of stories of collaborations and rescues, particularly where different cultures and peoples have worked together to positive ends, or when it acknowledges and mourns the tragedies and disasters of the past. A friend of mine asked me to recount his story about his journey into singing shanties. He said he was in a dark place. He'd lost his business. He had an injury that meant he couldn't work. And he said that singing shanties in the pub with his mates was the only thing that got him through that time. I know loads of stories like that. So many, in fact, I wasn't sure which one to pick to share. And the surprising thing has been blokes coming to me and saying, and you can tell other people that, you can share that. Shanty singing is all about teamwork. It's all about inclusivity. It doesn't require any prior training, any musical ability to join in. These were basic working songs that anyone could sing. It's a powerful tool to pull people out of social isolation. Shanty singing resonates with us because it speaks to the hero and the adventurer in all of us. Because of shanty singing, one day, I'd like to think that men will say, songs will be sung of this day. Thank you.